Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured. But the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. Immanuel Kant begins his preface to his short but very dense work, Prolegomena to Any Future Metaphysics, by telling us, the readers, who he actually has in mind for his intended audience. And there are a few things. He, he, the very first sentence, these prolegomena are not for the use of pupils or students, but of future teachers. And he goes on and talks about scholars for whom the history of philosophy is philosophy itself or their philosophy. And he says, I'm not writing it for them. So who is he actually intending in the present, not just future teachers down the line? Well, it, he has an intended audience. There's an aim, uh, a goal to this, uh, opsicht, an intention. Those who think that metaphysics is worth Studying, rough translation of Zik mit Metaphysik zu beschäftigen, to occupy themselves with metaphysics, those who find this valuable. And so yeah, there's already a well-established philosophical discipline of metaphysics by the time that Kant is engaging in this and writing his earlier work, The Critique of Pure Reason, that this is a, you know, in some respect, a prolegomena too. Um, but Kant thinks that there are problems with the existing metaphysics that we're, we're going to get to in just a moment. So he is going to talk about metaphysics as a science, a Wissenschaft. So some sort of body of knowledge that we can you know, say is genuine uh, knowledge, cognition of its objects. And Kant is writing at a time during the you know, mid-modern period where the sciences, or at least whatever we want to consider to be sciences, have actually been making a good bit of progress. So the question that he wants to raise is, is this happening with this particular uh, science, metaphysics? And he's going to tell us something that's actually quite extraordinary. Metaphysics doesn't actually exist as a science at this point in time. He, he says a little bit later that there has never been done that there is uh, as yet, no such thing as metaphysics. So if we understand metaphysics to be things that are in, in books of metaphysics or taught in metaphysics classes or ideas that people have in their head, sure, there's, there's metaphysics. There's plenty of it. None of that is genuine metaphysics as a real science, however. So Kant is criticizing the metaphysics that is presented as being um, here in, in, in his time and previous times as well, the history of philosophy. He does say, though, that the human mind, or specifically reason, Vernunft, um, demands that metaphysics be developed, exist, right? He says, it can never cease to be in demand. Um, needed, desired. Why? Because, he says, the interests of human reason in general are intimately interwoven with it. So why does a non-scientific mishmash discipline of metaphysics exist? Because we can't do without it. And um, people using human reason have been developing theories and ideas and throwing them around for 
really, millennia. Now, Kant says that what's really needed is a radical Fülliger in German, so a, a thoroughgoing reform or rebirth uh, of this, this discipline. And so, you know, a rebirth, that's kind of an interesting idea, uh, a neue Geburt, right? So a new birth, because it's never really been born, or a reform that goes down to the very roots, if we want to use the term radical. And Kant thinks that he is going to offer that, and that will be, uh, as he articulates it here, he says, the independent reader of these prolegomena will not only doubt his previous science, but will be fully persuaded it cannot exist unless the demands, the Führung, uh, here stated on which its possibility depends uh, be satisfied. And Kant is the one who is going to be articulating these. Now, jumping back a little bit earlier in the preface, he's going to raise some problems. This is why he thinks that metaphysics is not, at this point in time, a real science. Uh, one of the criterion is that there's no universal, no allgemeine, and lasting, dauerne, recognition by fall of it as a science or of the achievements uh, that have been attained up until this point. And he says, well, this is a little weird because if we look at other sciences, so think about chemistry, for example. People carry out experiments, come up with all sorts of theories that go far beyond the experiment and sometimes they have to do with things that cannot be directly observed. Um, they talk about it. At a certain point, people are like, yeah, okay, this is what we think as chemists or as physicists or as biologists. It starts getting a little bit stickier there. And as we get into the social sciences or into history, maybe it's not quite so easy to say. But there should at least be some consensus developing, right? And the consensus should stick so to speak, and Kant says, look at metaphysics, that hasn't happened. So what's the deal there? He says, all the other sciences make advances, uh, fortrucht, right? They proceed from one problem, one issue to another, and what they leave behind is viewed as secure, as having been established. Whereas with metaphysics, Everybody's doing their own thing, so to speak, or they're following along somebody else's path. And he says, um, whether we demonstrate our knowledge or our ignorance in this field, we must come once and for all to a definite conclusion respecting the nature of this so-called science, which cannot possibly remain on its present footing. It seems ridiculous, uh, laughable, right? That all these other sciences are advancing. And this one that pretends to be wisdom incarnate uh, we should constantly move around the same spot without gaining a single step. And this leads to people being rather leery of engaging in metaphysics. They're like, yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe you, you people who aren't good at the other sciences do this. This is, you know, the same kind of critique that we see people making from the, uh, uh, you know, we could call it the basis of STEM, uh, not real STEM work, but, you know, sort of a, an ideal of it against philosophy in general, isn't it? And other things. Now, he goes on and he says, one of the big problems with this is that we, we don't have some sort of um, standard, uh, zikaris, so zikaris means secure, right? So standard works there. Um, weight and measure to distinguish, to, to make a separation between uh, soundness from shallow talk. So we don't have a criterion by which we can tell real metaphysics, if that indeed exists, from all the silly spun out stuff that people have been generating year after year after year. So these are some significant problems if indeed true, and Kant certainly takes them to be true, and there's, you know, good reason for this. So what does this lead us to? Well, Kant not only has uh, a set of problems, but he has what he would like to offer us as a solution. And this begins by asking a key question. 
how such a science is actually possible, möglich sei, how it would be possible, that's in the subjunctive, right? And so he says that this is now the time to ask this, and it's okay to do that. We do have a lot of metaphysics on the scene, but he says, there's nothing extraordinary in the elaboration of a science when men begin to wonder how far is it advanced that the question should at last occur, whether and how in general such a science is possible. Human reason so delights in constructions that it has several times built up a tower and then raised it, destroyed it, pulled it down, to examine the nature of the foundation. It's never too late to become reasonable and wise, but it's going to be a little bit difficult because there's already people doing metaphysics out there and they are not gonna like this, he says. Um, he says, this raises doubts and a doubt offends the man whose entire goods may consist in this supposed jewel. So you must expect opposition from all sides. That's what Kant in fact expects. But he says that this question, whether a science be possible, presupposes or sets out uh, a doubt, a zweifel, a wavering between alternatives about, now notice this term, it's actuality, it's wirklichkeit. Is the stuff that's out there as metaphysics presenting itself actually in reality, wirklich, uh, metaphysics or not? Does it meet up with its promise? Does it fulfill its, you know, I, what, it, what it is actually proffering to people, a, a knowledge of reality. Kant is saying, no, it hasn't done that. We need to ask a fundamental question. And in doing so, we actually make a path for a future metaphysics that would in fact be adequate, that should command universal and lasting recognition. So that is where the prolegomena begins in the very early pages of the preface, setting a stage for us, setting a central problem for the rest of the work.